think we're live. Yep, we're live. The way things keep going wrong tonight. What is with this week? Welcome to Side Quest episode 38, everyone. I am Magog Morska, your future dark overlord. And tonight we're down a fairy. Don't know what happened. She just didn't, uh... She didn't wake up in time or something. I have no idea. <laughs> but we are joined by the host with the most STDs. Killer Jester. I'm the Killing Jester. Hello. Welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. Wait, you were on Monday. Never mind. Fuck off. And uh, we're here also with our other usual Friday night co-host, um, the baddest bitch in the Elven Valley, Lyra. Man, that's not saying much. You go, girl. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh. She's not down with the clown. Yes, I, I accidentally cut out on Doom's disclaimer, so I don't know if people will understand if today tonight's show is a shit show or not. I think they do already. It's probably okay. Yeah, we're, we're down a ferry, and I accidentally cut out on Doom's bit. <laughs> we're back in a thousand, Chief. We are starting off with a bang. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're way to go. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, this this show has more bangs than the Gaza Strip. Um, but I'm bumping. Rules are scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Everybody, your donations through super chats and stream labs are much appreciated. Not only do they have a real time effect on the show because they can uh, dictate whether or not we take damage, but also they help the show going, help us finance the show, and keep everybody paid. Um, because if the, no, if everybody did this for free. Um, I would have been murdered in my sleep by the co-host by now. Yes. Pay me. Pays it and says it. So, we're doing a three-person show, unless the fairy shows up late. I don't know if she will or not. But, um, tonight is a three-person show. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how we feel. We'll see if we end up ending it early because you're all retarded. And I can't do this without a fourth person. It's the way I designed the show. So, it already feels clunky. It all already feels weird that Erlin's not here for me to stare at. Yeah, yeah, that feels weird to me too. <laughs> Retarded. Just stare awkwardly at Erlin is is my job on this show. Apparently, uh, it triggers the fuck out of her. Um, welcome to the show, everyone. So, it's Friday night, and Friday nights, I like to take things a little easier than Monday night. Oh, God, we gotta deal with a drunk Maguga. I like to take things a little easier and talk about things that I enjoy instead of hate. Uh, is that fine with you? All right? What do you actually let, enjoy? Let's, let's bring some, some, some brevity instead of hatred and cringe. Let's bring How some... How come I got this show then? Well, you're a jester. You're a clown. You're supposed to entertain people with funny ha-has instead of, oh my god, he haunts my nightmares. Oh. There's nothing uh, but... Uh, don't ask how my hands are red. That's certainly oh. not where the fairy went. Just don't worry about <laughs> it, folks. It's fine. We're holding everything together. Just uh, uh, in order to revive a fairy, yes, clapping works, but it doesn't help if the fairy's between your hands when you clap. <laughs> Speaking of the clap, she ain't here right now. If you'd like to leave a message, fuck off. She won't call you back. Trust she me. She won't call you back. She never does. No. No. Never. I've uh, I've increasingly become more fascinated with the pop culture elements of the Earth realm since I discovered the magic to see into their dimension, and uh, since it's Friday night, let's uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. How about that? Okay. So, uh, everybody, let's Wang Chung tonight. No, no, that's gonna give me a epileptic fit. Everybody have fun have tonight. Fun tonight. Everybody, Everybody wang, wang chung tonight. tonight. 
Is that up to date oh. pop culture reference, or is is everybody gonna miss that one? I think I think that one was out of date even when it was in date. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the it's like one of the first memes, and it didn't even mean to be. Uh, yeah, it caused it caused out all kinds of bits. That video, oh, they they had seizure warnings at the beginning of it. You know, there's a there's a Wang running for president on the Democratic ticket. And I thought it would be fascinating if he came out on stage with Wang Chung. I don't think so. But he is coming out with free money and he still can't get himself above two points. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I'll give you free money. Eh. It's so oh. strange. It's almost like they comprehend that free money isn't real and it's suspicious and something has to be awry for it to just appear. Yeah. Right? Yeah, something, something's odd about that. Hey, that, that ain't right there, Wang Chung. No, no, no. We know better than that. We, that's, how you, that's how they got us in the Korean War. No. <laughs> with the free money and the bruise and, 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 and the broads with the things between their legs. No. We're not we're not having none of that now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like a nursery rhyme from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear God, you guys are dying right now. Just stop the show. <laughs> Shut up, bro. Oh. Shut up. I was... This is a fun oh. show. We're having all kinds of fun. Yeah, the chat's having fun. Oh, no, they're not. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, they're, they're revolting. Oh. And I'm not, telling, I'm not saying how they smell either. Revolting means something way different when it comes to you. <laughs> it was one time. I only cleared out one bar. You asked me to do a magic trick. And I said, hey, what, you want to see everybody disappear? And I made them disappear. You have those. They yeah. how. You they have those. They how. You have those like sickening beer farts, you know, the ones that like you have you drink so much you have like yeast building up in your intestines and then you let oh. you let one rip and it smells like, you know, it smells like a donkey died in a dumpster that's on fire. Like hey. <laughs> I I was watching I was watching an old boob tube video last night. And there was this guy, George Carlin, and he goes, who wants to be floating in the middle of an Atlantic Ocean on a cushion full of beer farts next to a guy with a fuck you hat on and a Grateful Dead t-shirt? I have no idea what that means. I don't know, but the cushion full of beer farts, I don't know what, what that was, but I liked it, that sound. Cushion full of beer farts. <laughs> bah! You liked it because it literally describes your body type. It literally <laughs> describes <laughs> my chair. <laughs> it's like a glad bag filled with beer farts. Just, <laughs> just inflated, inflated oatmeal mixed with beer farts. Yeah, take a whip of that son bitch sometime. You get hot. We gonna get hot. <laughs> What's just? Oh my god. This is this is this is what this show resorts to when we don't have a nanny. <laughs> no, I think if she was here, this would still be the topic. We would just get the, what the fuck are we doing, guys? <laughs> yeah, is this is what we we degenerated to? Yep. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Exactly. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what we've done. <laughs> yeah. Poop <laughs> jokes. Poop and fart. We've destroyed all um all hope that this show becomes some sort of big, you know, well known and popular 
mainstream show. This ain't happening. No, this is side quest, everyone. Uh, 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 it, it's still a shit show, even though on Doom didn't say it was. He will next time. I'll be sure to not accidentally cut that bit out. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Gotta have the disclaimer. Yeah. We should do like a, a, a retro 80s side quest. That would be awesome. Where it's like, you know, like there's like the broken tape graphic over yeah. it and like an overlay and then I could have like, you know, like every now and again the show will just cut out and it's like somebody re-recorded over a VHS tape too many times and you'll see like a break and something else is recorded behind it. <laughs> You know, and, yeah, then like, it'll, and then it'll, like, come back to us. And all of our uh, health bars are little 8-bit, you know, fucking NES characters. Yeah. That's and awesome. Then, like, we could all could have, like, like pop collars. And... Fuck pop yeah. Pop. Like, everybody and... come on in, like, bright neon pink, because that was a masculine color in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it was, man. You were yeah. nothing without fucking shoulder pads and jo Don Johnson fucking pink fucking undershirt like i'll be i'll be Corey haim you know oh right bad choice no no no, no. i'll be Corey haim because by the end okay. of the show i'll hang myself um, <laughs> there you go <laughs> um <laughs> oh too soon uh, arcturus arcturus could be uh rob lowe um lyra lyra can be um uh, what's her name for Breakfast Club? Uh, Molly, Ringwald. Molly Ringwald, right? Are you kidding me? You can be Molly oh. Ringwald. Oh, yeah, and uh, and and Jester could just sit in the corner and go, "Hey, you guys!" Yeah, I'll be Goofy <laughs> Goonie, John Matuzak, with a fucking waffle head. <laughs> hey, you guys! Oh, slub, very down. Be slub. Yeah. Uh, is, was that his name? I can't remember. Slob. 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 Baby Rod. <laughs> Butterfinger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, I'm calling you a giant retarded ogre. And? <laughs> <laughs> Only on my mother's side. <laughs> <laughs> my mother was a saint. A big fat retarded saint. <laughs> <laughs> what? She was so she was stoned to death too, like a saint. Yes. <laughs> yes. She was crucified upside down. Disemboweled. <laughs> Drawn and cornered. <laughs> and peed on by midgets. Oh, yeah, that's the worst. Yeah, they let the town midgets all pee on her. I hate midgets. <laughs> I always hated fucking midgets. Why are They're you little fuck? Why why are you a fucking jester? There's a lot of midgets in your line of work. Yeah, but not around me, if you noticed. <laughs> the killing jester. Yes, I get it. Those get little it. bastards don't have the lung capacity to yell for help. <laughs> <laughs> He's and got a little tiny those little tiny sausage fingers can't grab a mace or a sword real good. Little fucking fuckers. He's Their got it's falling out of their hand. He's got little midget skeletons like taxidermy to prop up his coffee table. <laughs> they're all bent over because they're all half hunched back anyway with their funny little butts. <laughs> you ever see them run? Oh, it's fucking hilarious. Their butts shaking and shit. That one half their body goes one way, the other half. We're gonna goes get kicked off way. of YouTube. Goodbye, YouTube. <laughs> um, making fun of the way people are bored. They can't help it. <laughs> it's one thing that they can't help. <laughs> it's called euthanasia. What does the youth in in China have anything to do with this? They could fucking go over <laughs> the place and just trust them out. He didn't know what to, where to go with that joke. The youth in Asia. I, I had to, I had, to, I had to fucking think on that one, boy. <laughs> I had to think on that one, but I pulled it out. What do young I people in out. China have to do with anything? <laughs> I was like, oh, he's dirty. He's dirty. 
I would love that. We should we should try to expand the side quest content. Maybe I mean we do spend two hours riffing on each other. Maybe every now and again we can have some side quest where we like share a link and uh, through the magic portal, and we all just watch like an '80s movie and just talk over it. Oh, I would like I that. Would love that. Like I just would some love some like eighty schlock film where we're like, hey everybody, today we're watching Sword and Sorcery, you know, like eighty oh, schlock films, like just a two work. hour, yeah, just like a two hour like mystery science theater type side quest where we're all just would... like, we're like up in the corner and every time we see something stupid, we'll pause it, we'll fucking talk about it, and it'll kill us. That would be yeah. awesome. That should, would be, I would love that. Tonight I, is idea night, since we're missing Erilyn. We're, we're actually going to do a good show, come up with good ideas. <laughs> if Erilyn yeah. was here, we'd just be farting in her face constantly. <laughs> yeah. And just go like this, hey, you awake, honey? You yeah. awake? Stick yeah. your head in the toilet. Just, just, we can only come up with these good ideas when the lush isn't here. <laughs> yeah, and saying something about Freud and her daddy issues. Yeah, can we? Should we do like a once a month yeah. Friday night movie night side quest where we just pick some shitty public domain schlock film and watch it for two hours and make fun of it? Yeah, but but we we wouldn't be able to have everybody on the stream. No, it'd just you know? be for the Friday crew minus the lush. That sounds great. We should bring it. <laughs> that, that'd be fucking, I, I'm all for that one. Like, I'm all for that one. I just haven't figured out how, like, how do we, uh, you know what I should do is we should prepare the movie beforehand, and then instead of watching it live streamed, I can edit it to where we won't get flagged for copyright. I'll, like, fuck up the picture, and I'll also be able to censor out any nudity so that while we're watching it, we don't have to, like, remember and cut it, you know? And that yeah, way we yeah. can watch it, and it'll have, like, like, my face smiling like a dumb bastard over the nipples. Just, there you go. <laughs> You know, just you know, like fucking. <laughs> okay. Oh, I will conquer you. <laughs> You're not allowed to see that, Tannis. Just what have Poe pop up. up. Just like Poe pops up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he sounds just like that. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Fuck you! Uh, that is totally apropos. <laughs> Oh, you should just die for that one. Just fucking die. But <laughs> God, kill him. Fine, I'll take. I'm the... <laughs> Fine, we'll take. We'll take that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Don't we should, give me the we, Kevorkian. We should start doing that on all side quests. Like, okay, we'll have a movie night, but then <laughs> like, like once a month, we'll do the Friday movie night, right? And I'll have something yeah. prepared that I can pull up on screen and everybody can watch. But then we could also do, like, instead of, like, okay, we have the grind where we read fucked up stories. But then we could also, like, just, like, share a link and, like, pull up, like, random pop culture th phenomenons and make fun of them together. Yeah. Like, we could, like, oh, today we're going to watch a music video from a band that was popular for 16 minutes in 2004 named Evanescence. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is bring me to life with Ben Affleck's Daredevil in it. Like, oh, 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 pu! Can, can oh. we just can we do that? Can we like make fun of like crap music videos? And we'd probably get flagged, wouldn't we? We'd get fucking flagged. That one we would flag. Yeah. That one, that one, you could kiss your super chats goodbye. But that would still be we great. That'd be great shit. It would be great, yeah. But you know what? But you know what? This YouTube fucking thing, they they they, they just want to suck the fun out of everything. Like suck the joy out of a room. Much like Yeah, honestly, with the with the size of audience that we have watching side quests, we could probably easily move to another platform that allows that kind of thing. The problem is not a lot of platforms do. Like Twitter will copyright flag you too. You know, like or not Twitter, uh, Twitch. Um, yeah. yeah, Twitch will copyright flag you too. So, and BitChute doesn't have a streaming yet. You know, yeah, like well, BitChute's been waiting to get a streaming thing for the past couple of years. We should we should watch movies that 
like every movie night we should watch movies that like cater to our personalities so like like one night we can review killer clouds from outer space <laughs> for jester <laughs> <laughs> Just... That, that, that was a good movie. <laughs> that one grabbing the fucking big cotton candy with the straw. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you have to be like on LSD to really appreciate that film. Oh yes, you do. What what can we like... live or Pornhub? Lyra, when it's Lyra's movie night, we'll watch um, Clueless <laughs> with. A... <laughs> Well, at least she's a silver star. I don't know why. I see her blonde hair, and I'm just like, she's a dumb, like, valley girl. I don't know why. I well, think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard what was right. about to come out. She's a dumb slut. I, I heard that. Slutty, heard too. That. Slutty's fine, too. I don't mind slutty. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Lyra? Give me your thoughts. I, I don't know. Shut up, Buffy. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> she watched watch the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer, just just to see Lyra's reaction on screen when uh, Pee Wee Herman does the whole like death scene where he's like, huh, 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 and then he comes back up, huh, huh, and they're just like waiting for him to die. And he's like, huh, huh. <laughs> that movie was great. <laughs> You know, we could watch we could watch Magog's uh, film, Larry the Cable Guy. Get her done. Yeah. <laughs> Get like like Magog with a trucker hat on. Like turn, take my MAGA hat and turn it sideways. Yeah. It's got a fish hook in it. Fucking, <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got in his fucking caravan. In his fucking. His little caravan. He's got he's got a fucking big dirty fucking home AC unit. Could you hanging out of it? Could you imagine that? Like I'll set up a set, and it'll make it look like the inside of a truck. And I'll have a I'll have a, I'll, I'll have a hat that says I break I break for Satan. Um, <laughs> like the middle of the movie, I'm just like we'll watch Black Dog with Patrick Swayze where he's a truck driver, and I'll just be like Breaker oh, Breaker. God. I have like a CB thing, be like Breaker Breaker Diner, Magog Borscar here. <laughs> watch Smokey really in the went Bandit digging for Black Dog. You really went digging for that. Oh come on, movie. that was a great with trucker meat movie. Low. That was a with great trucker movie. Yes, yeah. with Meat Low. Yeah, that was a great it trucker was. movie. There's so few good trucker movies. There's like Smokey and the Bandit, Black Dog, like what's that one with Rubber the, Duck? What's the with one with Chris, the yeah, Christopherson? Oh come on now, that's that what? That's too far back. People don't remember that. People don't Smokey remember. and the Bandit was in the '70s as well. Yeah, but Rubber Duck wasn't as impactful pop culture wise. Convoy. So, yeah, call, yeah. What about that one that uh, that uh, Sp was it Spielberg did with the. It was one of his first movies. Was it Spielberg? Who was it? No, Carpenter. John Carpenter. One of his first movies with the, with the truck that was like hunting the guy down throughout the desert. Duel. Oh yeah, Duel. Yeah, had like the oh, Green Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that was Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, that was Maximum Overdrive. Never mind. Sorry about that. That was Maximum Overdrive. Duel that was, was the Amelia one with the Chavez yeah. vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should watch that one too. Oh, you... that was awful. We, I think you should do a game extreme gesture where you play Twisted Metal. Because you look like the ice cream truck clown. I am not a clown! <laughs> I am a fool! A jester! A bringer of merriment and, and liveliness <laughs> to the courts among the land! Just, uh, we, should uh, just, we should just watch these schlocky old movies with like... Like we should do a we should do a side quest one night where we just have a compilation of like eighties rape scenes. Oh Jesus! Just... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> just last house on the left. Fucking hills have eyes. <laughs> just... oh. The outlaw. Oh wait a minute! High plains drifter. Uh... How many great movies have you watched that have had a rape scene? 
Oh. More than you think. <laughs> All right. And that actually got Lyra's last health point. Just, uh, she just, she got, uh, she got, uh, she got more fucked up than Jody Foster on a pinball machine. That was. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you're dead. Two minutes. Take it. A... Gently slumping. I'm dead. Yeah. Click, 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 click. Tilt, tilt, tilt. Tilt, 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 tilt. Oh, somebody give her another quarter. She's still got 20 minutes to go. <laughs> that takes me back. That is a wholly different pinball wizard. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Oh, that one got you... me. That one, that one was... Bad. I'm pop culture. I'm pop culture, Magal tonight. <laughs> That's right. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Let's go to super chats. Uh, <laughs> watch. <it. laughs> this is this is already a great show. I love it. Dollar Bill yeah. says, Magog, tell Arky I have his elf futa he wanted. I will pass that on to him. Diogenes the gamer cynic says, here's some healing uh, gnomish wine for Lyra. Uh, I will uh, restore her to full health when she comes back. American Phoenix says, Elf babe, attack Magog so viciously that he cries or you get fired. <laughs> I will activate that when she returns. And also we have, uh, oh man, this stupid scaling problem. Uh, use public domain movies, my lord. No issue then. Yeah, but there's so very few of those, you know? Public domain yeah. films. So few. And they're all shitty. Yeah. I mean, I want to do, like, fucked up 80s schlock movies that are kind of shitty, too, but I at least want them to be recognizable. Like, I don't know. Somebody send me a list of, like, public domain films, and I will go through them and we'll discuss it. How about that? Also, make sure they have rape. I, I... That, <laughs> that is the end of the Super Chats for the moment. Not a very busy night. Uh, Streamlabs. My lord! Oh, <laughs> want to play. American Phoenix donated five signals. Great job not dying, you geriatric fuck. Now, attack the elf. That's a five dollar attack towards the elf once she. Comes well, the elf back. has uh, has been healed. She is returned. Oh boy. And she was also activated to attack me. So I'll do both of those activations right now. <laughs> All right, and then you you jester to attack the elf. Five dollars. Yes. Yes. All right, there we go. Both have been activated. Okay. Who goes first, the chicken or the egg? I don't understand that question. <laughs> she has no Great. more eggs. Oh. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> I, oh. So you're out of clock. <laughs> you go first, honey. Yeah. God damn it. Att I don't. Attack me. Attack the Magog. Well, fuck, man. Uh, Let's Remember watch. Remember thou art immortal. Remember thou art immortal. I. You. You look like syphilis incarnate. That works. <laughs> I got you. There. She's getting meaner. She's getting yeah. meaner. I'll give her that. Ly Lyra, Lyra, I have a pickup line I want to test with you. Oh, dear. Let's watch rape together. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, Jester, attack Lyra. L L Lyra, you, you don't do a good job of hide hiding your mousy brown roots. That's not They're very nice. Still there. I'm working on it, man. Well, well, not hard enough. Well, you did have four dollars worth of health potions, and I only used um, I used only used one when you came back to life. Would you like to use it to to dye my roots? Yes, please. Yes, there you go. She's okay. that that I just wanted to offer that to you because it negates his attack completely. 
Oh, I appreciate that. Oh, oh geez, weapon. thanks a lot. <laughs> My lord! Lion Patriot donated one Cigna, a healing digestive pudding for Grandpa Jester. Fuck you, I ain't that old, but I'll take your healing. Uh, <laughs> one dollar healing for me. Thank I, you I went ahead and activated it. There you go. And Lyra? Y I, yes? Tell Magog that Lion Patriot donated two dollars healing boxed wine for Lyra. Two dollar heal for you. So she has even more healing. That's great. Yeah, you can see which way the crowd is jumping tonight, assholes. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, you would. Yeah, I do. Now, 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 I'm being told in the chat that even public domain movies will fuck up your channel because Gasly did it and it uh, it caused him to not gain subs or something. I don't fucking know. Hmm. Really? I don't know. I, I don't think it... I, I think if you do it all the time, it might fuck up your channel, but who gives a shit? We stream literally on this channel. It's just a stream channel. So, it's fucked up anyway because for some reason, YouTube doesn't like promoting streams even though they make more money on Super Chats than they do on ads. You'd think they'd promote streams, but no. They're very strange people, aren't they? Yes. I don't, I don't understand that business model at all. I do. It's destined to fail so they can stay in the fucking red. So they can always write it off at the end. Sure, that's what Google that owns YouTube is probably doing. But yes. uh, that's, that's not a very good business model as far as, like, keeping people on the street, uh, on the service. They don't care. They don't, they don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, they just want to be... They don't give be... a fuck about, about the killing Jester or Lyra or... Any other buddy else who streams or makes content, right? I don't give a shit. I'm right. Kidding. We yeah, should. Yeah, they they don't want to be the innovative, groundbreaking, culture-defining thing that they are. They want to be shitty network television and have irrelevant, defunct late-night talk show hosts be the only ones that they push. I suppose yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a... with crappy writers for some reason. Well, they have great talents like me. That's like rigging the dice to win, but accidentally rigging it to where you just crap out every time. <laughs> like, I don't... I don't understand. Like, they already have networks that, pr like, promote them. Why do they need fucking Jimmy Fallon on YouTube? Like, it's just clips from his show that anybody can go watch if they want to. I think they're all trying to save each other because a lot of those shows are dying, too. People aren't watching them as much anymore. Yeah. When's yeah, the last, like, late-night show? When's the last... I mean, I know we're not from their world, and we have to view their pop culture through crystals, but still, when's the last time you tuned in to Fallon? Or whatever. Never. You know, or wait, 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 fucking what? Trevor Noah. Who gives a shit? When's Little the last time ice, Trevor. you said, Oh, honey, grab the snack. And grab the sodas. We gotta get on before Kimmel is on. Come <laughs> on, let's go. Harry, get the TV dinners out, the Salisbury steak and the like. And no, I, I've never done that in my life. <laughs> Not since Carson. To be fair, I really did like Craig Ferguson when he was on. He I, was everybody really liked funny. Craig Ferguson. Yeah, everybody liked Craig Ferguson, but he's not yeah. doing his show anymore, is he? No. Yeah, so. He was too entertaining. He didn't fit the model. Yeah. A lot of people are getting their late night, at least as far as a format, their late night format. They're getting that on, like, internet. Yeah. I mean, who gives a shit about NBC or CBS or fucking Fox anymore? Like, who gives a... Fuck all of you! <laughs> it's the fucking freedom of, of digital information age, motherfuckers. Yeah, I like that. Motherfuckers, what the fuck y'all doing there? Y'all fucking up good goddamn thing. I'll be all the fucking go over there with a fucking big-ass boogie whip and give you the smack. 
Everybody, I uh, I did want to announce, now that that tirade is over, I did want to announce I'm doing a uh, GoFundMe to raise money for a uh, tire iron or a crowbar to beat Chester to death with. <laughs> <laughs> well, make sure it ain't a spider like you did last time there, Bo Cephas, because you fucking went and hit, hit the tire and it nearly don't take out your eyeball. This joke is trite and useless. Just like my sister. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> yeah, like, why Why would you watch the same, like, rotating cast of 15 little arrogant delusional celebrities all interview each other and pretend they care about their audience when you could watch like us? Like, the people who crawl away in the background during cops and never get caught. Yep. Or where the guy, the, the guy who's in the in the kitchen with the fucking wife beater, who's not surprised the cops in his house, like me. The answer, <laughs> the answer to all those questions is the world is a vampire. Said to Jane. Despite all his rage, I'm still just ready to ready cage. to cage. <laughs> 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 I I think people get like there's also a short attention span kind of entertainment now where it's just like most people if they want to laugh they can just get on social media or YouTube and watch 30 second clips but they get a varied it's like funniest home videos but yeah just all the time now like Bob Saget did it first and now the internet just copied him yeah. You know? Well, I, I love listening to Bob Saget, by the way, talk about the making of that show. And, like, in order to pick what would go on the next episode, they had to sift through, like, thousands of tapes people would send in. And among them, there was stuff they were never allowed to put on TV. But he'd be, like, <laughs> he'd be talking about it in his interviews and stuff. I, I've heard him talk about, like, you know how many, like, homemade porn movies women have sent to Bob Saget? Yeah, like, oh, my it, God. <laughs> like, you know how many, like... Like, here's a funny video of my kid, like, literally dying. Like, the kid, like, falls off a cliff. And it's like, isn't it so funny? And he's like, no. No. I can't put that on TV. That kid's dead. There's, like, splatted blood at the bottom. And they're like, isn't it oh funny? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, who the fuck yeah. would send that in? You've got, I, like, I need that $10,000 for burial costs. <laughs> yeah, Jesus <laughs> You've got like the porno pile and like the for the FBI pile. You just got a bunch yeah. of people to oh, sit yeah. through them all. I'd oh. love to do a show like that. We should do a side quest like that. Like get our fans to send in just fucked up YouTube videos that are like no more than 30 seconds long. Just send in like Twitter and YouTube videos and we'll go through them every week. And, <laughs> and then pull them up and just do a do a show of the... the uh, you know, a fucking world's most fucked up videos. Our 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 fans. Oh yeah, you're have right. You see, have you seen the Discord? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's true, Chester. You be like, we're gonna have to have like a whole pile for just Blue Waffle. Yeah, like, it's just, gonna be it's gonna be bad. Hey, it's another prolapse video. Leave that one for Lyra. Yeah, yeah. God damn hey, it. Lyra, Lyra, look at this one. It's hilarious. <laughs> Put your fucking insides on your inside, man. It's not that hard. Keep, keep your innards from going outwards. Like, I don't yeah. get it. <laughs> yes. Um, That's what this show needs. Hemorrhoid cream. <sighs> um, yeah. <laughs> that, that could be funny if we had, like, a segment on SideQuest, like The Grind, which is just called, like, like TikTok Death. <laughs> Like, just call it TikTok death. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. We watch TikTok videos until we die. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> Not it. Uh, I can imagine some of the videos we'll be watching it. It'd just be like, nope, that killed me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just like auto death. I'm just like auto death. No, I can't take this one. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh man, we should do pictures too. Like, there's there's so many like screenshots of fucked up artwork, and like we can make this a really fun show next season instead of just 
completely improving everything. We could kind of set up everybody as a segment and just like Lyra, just every week go to DeviantArt and Reddit and save oh pictures. <laughs> <laughs> just, just... <laughs> oh well, God! DeviantArt is gold mine, dude. Oh yeah, you could write your thesis oh. on that. <laughs> just... See all these websites? I know, no, no. Oh, I've been on the yeah. I, I've had my crystal. For viewing for a very long time, and there's certain places even I won't go. Everybody in the chat, would you like to see Lyra do a segment called Where Are Her Organs? <laughs> I would like that. <laughs> Somehow just every every episode devolves into just watching Hitomi Tanaka videos and everybody's like, This this isn't good for youtube this is wrong we're gonna get in oh, trouble wow. now do you think because of michael moore colin Bine, the city had to get rid of all bowling alleys oh <laughs> oh oh, oh. oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> i'll take a health point i'll take a health point yeah, for I, 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 if i could slap you through this thing i would <laughs> uh, I said that joke on purpose because I saw the super chat. Dominus says, Necromancer, heal thyself. And I was like, yes, I can do a stupid joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, I can harm myself now. Whee! <laughs> and I won't die. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Would, would we get flagged for that, though? Would we get flagged for pulling up artwork and and making fun of it? I mean, who knows? Maybe. Maybe not. Like, like, what if there's, like, a really beautiful painting that took, like, somebody, like, 10,000 hours to do, and it's, like, Da Vinci-level fucking, you know, like, fucking, fucking level of artwork with the most beautiful brushwork and colors, but there's, like, a penis. And we just And we just, like, focus it. in on that and be like, <laughs> what the fuck? Why is there a cock? There's a ding ding in there. <laughs> <laughs> Myrtle! Myrtle! Come here! What does this look like? It looks like a dick! That looks like... Hey! Oh! Hey! Is that a dick over there? <laughs> oh, God! It is! It's a dick! Don't look, Ethel! But it was too late. <laughs> my, my wife is gone! She thinks all dicks should look like that! Oh, yes, I'm they... ruined! Oh, yes, they call him the streak. Oh God! Boogity boogity! <laughs> Go back. Your people got no reason to live. <laughs> nobody, nobody got that reference. <laughs> no, nobody. nobody did. Nobody, nobody. nobody. <laughs> Don't look, Ethel. Boogity boogity. <laughs> nobody got that reference. I'm gonna watch the chat. If somebody got that reference. You, you've earned a gold star for this episode of SideQuest. Lyra's over there like... Huh? Nope. <gasps> I understand 0.5% of pop culture, and even that's probably a stretch. That's why I want to give you the segment, Where Are Her Organs? Yes. It would be jolly good times. Yes, yes it would. Somebody actually um, parodied that to the point of literal... Like, <laughs> being literal. Like, I saw a, a, a picture somebody drew, some artist drew, to make fun of that meme. And it was, like, a beautiful woman, but she was literally, like, playing organs. <laughs> like the instrument. <laughs> like, she just... <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, my God. Jim Adams and right-wing BDSM guy got that reference. Gold star, guys. Fucking Ray Stevens. Yeah. I, I pulled that one out of my fucking fat past just <laughs> fuck man that that's 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 from my age <laughs> that's older than old i can't believe you that's guys older got... than me how holy old are shit. you fucks <laughs> holy fuck good for you <laughs> did, did they did they get the follow-up with short people they probably did if they got it the first time I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that means they have yeah. to be a fan. He was a very limited run comedian. Um, well, no, I, um, the the short people is Gary Newman, actually. 
Oh, Newman? Uh, who the fuck yeah, watched he... Newman? No, no, Gary Newman, the one who did uh, You Got a Friend in Me. You Got a Friend in Me. That wasn't Gary Newman. He, 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 Gary Newman. He fucking, he wrote um, Short People Got No Reason to Live. Back in the 70s. That was Randy Newman who wrote the Toy Story song, not Gary. Then that's who that's who wrote um, the the Short People song in the seventies. Okay, whatever. Who gives a shit? The... Shut up. Yours was better. I know. Uh, I the... just wanted to get it. I wanted to surf in on your coolness. <laughs> Ride those coattails, baby. The... That's what I do. The Judas Priest says, "Round up your health, Lord Magog. Conquest awaits." Thank you so much. But damn. Yeah, health. And Dominus says, a pox on the elf. Down with the clown. Heal, Lord. So I have yet more healing to cash in on. Thank you so much. Gracious. Buggity, buggity. Buggity, buggity. Buggity, buggity. Thank you, Poe. <laughs> Fuck you too, bird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tonight, I guess, I don't know why we just ended up on the topic of what we're going to do next season. Because, like, you have to understand, this season was about growth. Of uh, of learning to work with the new co-hosts and have you put up with me to see if you could live long enough to do the show, long, you know, long term. But next, next season, I expect you all to work a lot harder. Hey, Magog? No. Damn it. <laughs> Half dollar donated three dollars. Tell Lyra to get her old barmaid job at Cheers. Is that? That's a reference to. I I know what Come Cheers on. is. I liked I I I liked uh, Fraser. almost smell the wood burning. <laughs> <laughs> no, was it was it Frasier like a like a spin-off of Cheers? Spin off, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was a spin off of Cheers. Right, I knew that. I know pop culture everything, yes. <laughs> everything yes. <laughs> I want Myra to just say yes. <laughs> Her name was Diane. Her name was Diane why are you yelling at me? No one gives a fuck who Diane is. Ugh. What the joke was the big I want to kill her. All right. Uh, Vladimir Dragunov says there's a movie called uh, Freaked Out with Randy, with Randy Randy Quaid that would be good for side quest movie night. Freaked Out with Randy Randy Quaid. Uh, I know who Randy Quaid is. Is that horny, horny Randy Quaid? Hey, oh, God. Jester, My... uh, Lyra's not going to get this, but I'm, I'm curious if, you know, you instantly started out. I gave you, like, the old person crystal so that the Earth Realm, the only thing you would consume is stuff from a long time ago. Yes. Um, <laughs> I was wondering. I have the geriatric one, yeah. There is a, there is a little known... Dennis Quaid movie that a lot of people forgot, but it's one of my favorites he did. I would love to, like, review it with you. It was called uh, Wilder Napalm. Do you remember it? No, sir. You don't remember Wilder Napalm? Who in the chat remembers Wild? One in the chat if you remember Wilder Napalm. It was about two brothers who had pyrokinesis. They could catch things on fire with their minds. And when they were really young, they were using the power to have fun in the woods and they were blowing up this old woodshed, you know, with the power of their mind. And it turned out there was a homeless man in it and it killed him. And so the one brother decides to never use his power ever again, like, because it scared him. But Dennis Quaid, when they grew up, he continued to use his power and became like a circus freak. And when he comes back into town, he kind of wants to, like, fuck up his brother's life. It's a crazy movie. Because they both love the same girl, and they both have fire starter powers. We should totally do that movie night. You don't remember Wilder Napalm? Never mind, we're moving on. Huh? Who are you people? 
Uh, there's a few people putting one in the chat, but it's it's a real a relatively unknown movie. I will say that. Um, uh, Vladimir Dragunov says actually it's just called Freaked. The out uh, part was autocorrect. Um, being a bastard. Well, sorry about that. Uh, that happens a lot with you apparently. And Half Dollar says Jitter Crystal for the Jester. Jitter Crystal. Jitterbug. Jitter, jitter yeah. crystal, you can crush up into a fine powder and become like the jester if you snort it. Yep. He's a fan of the booger sugar. Oh, is that what that is? Oy. Because Please, I've been clogged with it. I've been clogged with it ever since. Oh, it, oh the hay fever and the, the schmutzen and the schnutzen. <laughs> Oy, a volt. Oy, vey. <laughs> Don't be knocking on that there. Ugh. At, at, somebody saying it. Was, who's that? Ugh, Snoopy SN says that sounds like the movie Firestarter. No, completely different. Firestarter was based on Stephen Drew King. Drew Barrymore. Yeah, that was yeah. based on Stephen King's short story, and it had Drew Barrymore in it when she was a little girl. And she had the Firestarter ability. Wilder Napalm was like a completely weird, fucked up side movie that was like straight to VHS. <laughs> I'm, I'm it had Dennis Quaid in it. It had fucking Dennis Quaid in it. I'm surprised you didn't like Firestarter better because it had George C. Scott and a horse named Necromancer. No, I, I, I enjoyed Firestarter. I've got no problem with Firestarter. I'm just saying, when it comes to Firestarter-like movies, Wilder Napalm is definitely the lower, lesser-known one. <laughs> the lower on the tuning pole of your, your, your je ne sais quoi, uh, the... the, the Poopy papa. I can't believe you don't know Wilder Napalm, man. People need to watch that one. Uh, Vladimir Dragunov says, My autocorrect hates me. Apparently. Yes, you're cursed. You're cursed with auto curse. It's auto yeah, but your wallet loves us. So that's all we give a fuck about. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. <laughs> um, do, does anybody want to, like, bring up another topic or something? Sure. I want to bring up a topic. All right. I forgot. <laughs> Very we'll good. See. You did your best. <laughs> you did so well, Justin. <laughs> I tried. You get a banana sticker. I, th is it scratch and sniff? Yes. I but, I forgot. But the sniff part only lasts for three or four scratches. That's something those sticker manufacturers never tell you. It's not a forever smell. It only works a couple I, of times, and then you're fucking done. You're stuck with a regular sticker with no superpowers at all. Yeah, it's not like your pustules. Yeah. What? Huh? They don't. They don't smell every time you scratch the top of them off. It's just a couple times. She doesn't. How do you know about my pustules. She she doesn't she doesn't open her dick liquor much, but when she does. Everyone wishes I hadn't. It's yeah, like, so close your cocksucker. It's like... <laughs> I, I don't know why, but Lyra is the living embodiment of a fever dream. <laughs> All yeah. I can say is uh, <laughs> I, we're, we're having a very, very, very bad... Uh, uh, what is that word? Uh, uh, influence on her. She's becoming really saucy. And, 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 uh... The fuck is that? I'm pouring a drink. Shut the fuck up. I'm allowed to do that. It's Friday night. I'm pouring a drink. <laughs> my, my, my. I, I enjoy, on a good Friday night, I enjoy Pap's Blue Dragon. Okay? It's a wonderful aid. <laughs> but the metal shavings... <laughs> Who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> Paps Blue Dragon. I like that. It's better than Paps Blue Waffle. Let's move on. Uh, oh. It's not as salty and, mm. and as fishy tasting, but it gets not where as, you're going. Not as textured. Not as textured. Do you think that yeah. do you think that two Lyra's one cup is just Lyra looking at a cup talking to herself, going, This cup has a nice design. It's not as round as I want, though. Yes. 
<laughs> Indubitably. And then, and then she puts it back on the Salvation Army's fucking <laughs> shell. <laughs> I just imagine Lyra's one of them girls that wakes up in the morning and like walks into the into the into the into the privy into the into her powder room and she sees herself in the mirror and goes hello evil me and then like brushes her teeth and shit like she just greets her reflection as hello evil me <laughs> until she gets all fucking gussied up and shit and brushes the teeth and does the adrenochrome and fucking you know she's, she's one of those she just she just has this cutesy like way of greeting her 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 incredibly dark and depressed alter ego. Like, hello, evil me. La la la. We're brush my teeth. Somebody, we're not killing anybody today. <laughs> I'm going to keep you in check and push down deep inside the pit of my soul. <laughs> she, she's just, she's just, she, she, she like masks the scent of her murder rage. With, 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 with cutesy like elven platitudes. <laughs> I, that's that's purely ah. fictional. Like she's one of those people that probably pushes down all of her rage and anger and hate so deep down and so tight in a in it's such a compressed ball that every now and again it kind of just it's like a sunburst it just pops out. So she'll just be like, she'll be talking to somebody and just be like, oh yeah, that was a, it was a wonderful store actually. They had this really nice section of, of ladies garments that I murder and I really enjoyed shopping there. <laughs> and her friends are all like this. Okay. That's only happened like five times in my life. Okay. That's. She just, she just. She just, That's why they won't let her back in the Shire. She just has, like, moments of pure, unadulterated rage through the cuteness. It's like this autistic cuteness, <laughs> but every now and again, she'll just be like, Oh, this is a wonderful movie. I want to spill the blood of the innocent! Man, this movie is really great. I love the animation. <laughs> Rip out the heart of the unbelievers! <laughs> Yeah, I'm just talking about nature, and I saw the prettiest flower today, and I'm, like, putting away dishes as I do, and one of them keeps kind of falling. And I'm just talking happily, and all of a sudden, I just scream bloody murder, and I, like, slam the plate on the floor, and it shatters into a million pieces. <laughs> and then I just go back to talking about how nice the day was, and it's so pretty outside, and I saw a little deer, and it was so lovely. <laughs> I liked it. Oh, it got warm in my cave here. Oh, the stunned boy. silences make me know I'm real, at least, so. <laughs> Have you ever had to, like, am I the only one who does this? Have you ever had to scream a memory away? Like, you ever, like, think of something that's, like, a really embarrassing memory from when you yes. were younger? And you yes. just you just find yourself yeah. going, Run! Run! <laughs> Go! <laughs> Never again! Never more! I hate you. And then you like bunch it up real tight. You try to push that memory back. You're like, no, never again. Don't think of that one. No, I don't want to think about that. Think about something else. And you'll wad up your fist and they're by your head. Next thing you know, you're going to split in the headache trying to get that motherfucker out of there. <laughs> you have to like sneeze. You have to like sneeze the bad memory out. So it's, it's one of those. It's one of those like bad memory demon sneezes. It's like usually you're like, it's you. But when a bad memory hits, you go, <laughs> <laughs> or something embarrassing you did when you were a kid. Something embarrassing you did. We had no control over whatsoever. Right, right. sure. You're but just it, a kid. Yeah, but it's still embarrassing. It's like, why did I do that? Oh. <laughs> I do. Oh. The, I do that. I, sometimes I do that in a public place, and I don't realize it. Like I'll just be like. You know, at a tavern eating my meal, and people are like kind of judging me because they know I'm a necromancer, but they don't fuck with me because they know I'll kill yeah. them. But every now and again, oh, you're a necromancer. Yeah. But then I'll think of that moment when I was a child where I accidentally like trip and pulled my teacher's skirt down in the <laughs> middle of fucking class at the Academy of Runevald. It was really embarrassing, and everybody poked fun at me and laughed, and the teacher ran out all embarrassed because her skirt got ripped off by a weird little 
fucking pale kid with black fucking circles around his eyes. And I'll just sit there and be eating at the tavern and I'll go, <laughs> But see, but see, Magog, that, that adds to your mystique, boss. They think that you're possessed by a demon. Yeah, soul. Right. And, and it's, you're, 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 you're holding it in and that you could kill them with one strike of your mighty breath Dude. when it comes to me and i do that they think i'm having a retarded fit and beat me with clubs in the head <laughs> so they you know yeah. like so have you ever like projected that bad memory onto somebody else you know you know, like it's not good. you be like, like you just thought of it and tried to repress it, and then somebody will come up and be like, "Would you like a refill on your drink?" And be like, "Do not call me Skirt Terror. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Skirt Ripper Magog. What are you talking about?" <laughs> no, you can't pee in my hair. I will destroy you. Yes, please refill my drink. <laughs> no ice this time. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> we are really we're really pushing the boundaries of improv comedy for, for the next twenty minutes until we get to the grind. Are you kidding me? Me and you, boss, all the way right to the poorhouse. Oh yeah, poorhouse for sure. <laughs> we are emotionally bankrupt. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you. <laughs> well, we need it. We need to move on. Let's think of another topic that you know. I'll, I'll try to think of. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay, Skirty Ripper. Well, well, we'll never bring it up again. Skirty Ripper. <laughs> That's Skirty the Ripper. <laughs> the Skirt Ripper. What the hell kind of name is that? It's like a, it's like a less violent Jack the Ripper. I can picture a little tiny bald head in Magog, a little tiny top knot, just, just the, the little beady eyes with the black around them, the, the, the tiniest ever little outline of black on his lips. What's the most Chris embarrassing? Black. What's the most embarrassing hey. thing you ever did as a child? Not as a teenager. I don't want to know your fucking drama and why Brad didn't ask you out. I want to know, like, the really embarrassing children's thing. Hmm. <laughs> it's ten bucks she didn't let. Ten bucks she didn't let Frodo and Sam piss in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> You can't tell Look me you don't have I, anything. I could still smell smoke. You never. I'm not smoking. You never. You never. Uh, you never actually. You know. You never purposely. You know, thought that you'd get back at your sister by putting. You know, like using a sleeping spell on a squirrel and then putting the squirrel in your sister's pillow so that when she lays down at night, the squirrel will wake up and freak out and she'll get all. It's it's scared and run around the room and you'll laugh. I did that one time, but. It was a wraith squirrel in my sister's dead now. Yeah, but not due to the wraith squirrel, from what I heard. I heard she ran headlong into a fucking bedpost and mashed her face like a cow catcher. We didn't have beds. Oh. That was an accident? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Let's, Jester, you had that something when you were tight. Oh, of course. When you were a tiny, oh, no, I'm working with you over here. Tiny, tiny little clown. I was a tiny little fucking tight tater tot. When you were, when you were running, man. you when you were running around just as a, as a as, as a gigolo. My 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 parents never wanted me, so they always made me play outside. So, you know, I I, I made up fantasy friends for myself, and and I used to put on burlesque shows and I used to find big leaves from the trees and wear them and I used to start chorus lines and then one day a 
bunch of traveling bunch of traveling fucking merchants stopped by the road and started throwing poo at me and said, grow some tits, boy. Let it out, Chester. Tonight's a, a therapeutic session of side quest. <laughs> that's that's what we do when Erilyn's not here because she needs therapy and none of us want to do it for her. None I of us want that job. Tits. I couldn't grow tits. Just cry. Now, now, boy. now try, try my therapeutic method. Turn your head and go. That's better well, act. That's better acting than when he dies. <laughs> they threw a poo at me. Everybody, it, I. It was fresh. <laughs> we want very fresh. I personally, and... I personally would love to see a live production of the Little Clown on the Prairie. I would love to see you fucking strung up by your fucking nether region because that shit ain't gonna happen. All right, Pippi Longstocking, calm down. <laughs> fuck you, fucking, fuck you, Skirty McRipperton. How do you like them apples? You like that? You like, you like that? Your childhood trauma it, 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 right, boasted right back at you? God damn it. I, I'm gonna... I, I, I just wanted to sell fast food. <laughs> and I get this shit. I'm going to bury you what? in shit one of these days. Yeah, you don't think that hasn't happened before? <laughs> Look at me. Manure. I hate manure. <laughs> All right, Lyra. Shit. Your turn. It's everywhere. Oh, Your dear. Turn. What embarrassing thing did you do as a child? A little child elf. Well... Yes, I was a wee elf, and I was in our little academy, learning all kinds of incredibly dignified, uh, beautiful, ethereal things. Okay, yes, uh-huh. And, <laughs> and our teacher gave us all these ancient scrolls to read about our, our wonderful, dignified, etc., history. Um, and she sent us all over to the little corner of the room, and so I had my little scroll... There were a couple people sitting there already. And I went over and I sat down. And it was very quiet in this room, mind you. And um, uh, as I sat down, I let out the most horrifying, deafening, like earth shattering, like flappy sounding fart <laughs> I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> And uh, it was about 30 seconds, and then one of the other, the other little elves said, Uh, teacher? Somebody made a stinker. <laughs> it was like half a minute later, <laughs> one of their little brains finally registered. <laughs> Something happened. Something is horribly awry here. What the fuck did you eat? <laughs> I, I don't know. And... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. Oh, that has haunted me. <laughs> because I know my face was like like deathly purple. Did you follow through? Did, I... you, did you have to fucking go change your elven panties? No. No, I just kept reading. I just kept the straightest face I've ever done in my life and I just kept reading. It's one like of those. I... Yeah, it wasn't me. If I don't acknowledge it happened, it didn't happen. Oh, I will will it into no. being. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Now do my therapeutic, do my therapeutic. <laughs> do it. He'll kill you. <laughs> He'll rip your skirt. All right. That is a great therapy session, everyone. Congratulations. That was awesome. Hooray. Yeah. Hooray. I feel much worse now. <laughs> wait, wait. I, you did ask me, Magog. Oh, I'm sorry, Poe. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a story from your past when you were a little chicken? I wasn't born a chick. Fuck you. Okay. So this one time, I broke into a wizard's tower. And I didn't realize that it was filled with so many fucking traps. And I fell down the strap and impaled myself on spikes. But the worst part was, 
a shadowy figure stood above me and laughed, looking down at me as I died, laughing at the fact that I pooed myself and kept calling me Poopy Pants Thief. Poopy Pants Thief. It was fucking horrible. I don't know who did That's cruel. That is so cruel. Go ahead and do the thing, Pope. Do the thing. Yeah! Yay, everybody. Therapy That's sex. very good. Very yeah. good. Good, Poe. Yes. You're, 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 you're moving on. Yes. Um, one time, a thief broke into my tower and impaled himself on one of my traps, but I did not call him a poopy pants thief. That's just too cruel. That's evil. That's wrong. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> And you did do that, didn't you? <laughs> so this one time, I I was uh, I was an exchange student at an elven school, and I was just like a little kid, and I was oh, sitting no. in class drawing a picture, and some little elven kid just ripped ass, it, like vibrated the fucking walls. I thought it was a hurricane. I, th <laughs> I, I, I seriously thought you were gonna go. I was I was an exchange student, and I just went like this. Testing out a fart spell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was testing Later, fart spells. Ass. Turns out I'm really good at fart spells. <laughs> Made her bust ass right there in the middle of crash. Because it was, she was reading. Yeah. I mean, it turns out even as a young, uh, even as a young student mage who hadn't even reached the level of apprentice yet, I had mastered epic flatulent spells. Oh God! This show has gone down. Damn you! We're all going. We're all going to hell. And this is this is this is the this is the train that you're on, folks. This is the wagon cart you're on. <laughs> no, no, we only got 15 minutes, and then we're we're going to do the grind. So let me check on oh, super chats. Awesome. We have we haven't got that many tonight, so it's not like it's it's yeah. um it's been just like a show of super chats. Sometimes it's like yeah, yeah. you know it's nice. Uh, American Phoenix says the elf is like the rabbit from Monty Python. So cute, but so deadly. And like the rabbit, I want Magog to throw a grenade at her. So a five dollar activation for me. There we go. <laughs> so, all right, I have to attack a five dollar attack the elf. Um, Elira, I would now yeah. like to speak to you in your native tongue. <laughs> I saw that fucking coming a mile away. <laughs> and I'm still so angry. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let you use one of your he You've got all kinds of health, so I'm gonna heal you right back up again, though. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Some healing deodorizer. <laughs> Some, <laughs> Some um, healing to breeze for Lyra. <laughs> Some healing Febreze, right? Some fucking there you go. More like healing Lysol. You gotta also kill the germs. <laughs> you can't just kill them. Yeah, but... You just can't. You, you know. Yeah, you gotta cover the odor, though. The Lysol don't hey, cover the odor. Hey, guys, guys, can you donate a little bit more, buddy? I want to buy Lyra for the Christmas. In the Earth Realm, it's Christmas. In, in, uh, in our realm, it's the day of winter, Orthos Day. But uh, I would like to buy her a gift. When winter begins, uh, a Richter scale, so that she can. <laughs> you asshole! I, I was actually gonna buy her a, a, a thing of 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 novelty panties with with a hose in the back and a hood that goes over her head, so she can dance herself. <sighs> The, 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 the... Oy vey. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you, 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 yeah, I'm a dick, you, I know. You turned, you turned your little classroom when you were a little girl, you turned your, when you were a little she-elf, you, you turned your, you turned your classroom into Auschwitz gas chamber. Sick. I knew that was coming. I just let that joke go. I just, I was like, this well, I'm going dog. for it. Is McGaw going for it? Yep, there it goes. He's got the bait. He's got the bait. 
Uh, some of those some of those jokes are like the high dive board and I shouldn't climb all the way up to them and dive off, but I I just can't help it. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a risk taker. <laughs> it's like, oh I got me a Marlin! Whoa! Hey, at least it wasn't like, you know, like I've I've seen I've seen the military training in the Earth Realm where they all have to in basic training do the gas chamber and lift off the gas mask, but then after you suck it in, you gotta go outside, and snot is coming out, and your tears are, and you gotta do the airplane thing, you gotta walk around with your arms out, it's like, at least her, the, her fellow students didn't have to do that, no, like, at least if they weren't outside on the playground, just like, ah, bunch of tiny elves T-posing running around the playground. <laughs> just a bunch of tiny elves just T-posed. <laughs> not coming out tears. <laughs> the, te uh, the teacher's over there just rocking back and forth from the <laughs> horror of it. Just... <laughs> and fucking Lyra's sitting there. It's not that bad. Stop it. <laughs> They're just looking over Stop at her like they're just like like one little elf kid. It's like the dead thing in your ass has a dead thing in its ass, <laughs> and that <laughs> thing farted. <laughs> oh man, you should have. Oh fuck! <laughs> being an elf in school and being like one with nature and all the animals, she was probably she probably already had the the joke lined up. As soon as everybody, she she would just be like, "Somebody see that frog." <laughs> just brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
as I thought, Lyra. Then again, we, we don't live in the Earth realm, so. This is true. Just, 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 never mind, I'll hit you up later. Oh, dear. Elves, okay. elves are the, the hipsters of our world. They're so pretentious and f effeminate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. My Lord! Yep, okay, go. Oh, wow, oh, I got a, I got a, not a, oh. The amazing Critter Man donated five signals to say, Jester, attack Magog if you please. Well, I you have been activated. My God, thank you very much for um, bringing out that very deep-rooted and locked-in memory of my heart. Blow out your um, ears. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, like I plan, to, I, I, <laughs> I, I plan to later all over your tent um but but now i would like to say but a, a hearty thank you and um may, may poe fly straight up your fucking asshole do a fucking spin and um come out your mouth sideways because you're a jerk off for that i don't like that and now all i have in my mind is poo and Is that an insult to work. him or me? Who the fuck are you attacking? Well, you're just bones, dude. It fucking comes off in the wash. I hope you die. And shit yourself like Lyra. It's not going away, Lyra. Damn it. <laughs> Damn right, Miss Pooty Pants. Ugh. This is, could you, that's, this is how the Elven Republic, this is how the Elven Republic dies, with thunderous shit. <laughs> uh, so, sound and fury, signifying nothing. <laughs> Was that the only one, Chester? Yes, okay. my lord. Well then, I suppose we should just go ahead and move on to the grind. All right, let's see what we have today. Mm. Um, I think we already did that story. Did we? I, that looks familiar. Did we do the story about the Utah woman who was charged with lewdness after being topless in her own home? That sounds really familiar. Who was that sounds weird really her, familiar. Like stepkids or something? She was yeah, like yeah. yeah, 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 we did that. Well, I think what we did was she was arrested. But now there's an update to the story. She's actually been charged. Wow. Whoa. Yes, she's been charged yeah, she with... She was a loony liberal. Yeah, she was, she's was. she been charged with lewdness in her own home after her stepchildren walked into the room and saw her bare-chested. What, what happened was, if I remember right, she was doing work. Her and her husband were re-insulating the garage, and that stuff got all over her clothes and was real itchy. So she took... Her and her husband both took off the their shirts because it was so itchy and her stepchildren happened to come in while she, her tits were out. So it's not like she was like walking around the house all naked with her kids looking. She was like getting out of the itchy fucking clothes yeah. to go take a yeah, shower. But, she, but if I remember, she sat there and explained it to the kids. Well, no, this is natural and these boobs are this and that. And it's not the, the kid's natural mother. Sure, but I, I can also understand wanting to explain to the children what they just walked in on. So it depends on how she did it. It's not really clear. But she yeah, is yeah. charged. Um, she is charged with lewdness. <clears throat> Apparently that's a law in Utah. Wow. I'm glad my cats can't talk or go to the authorities. <laughs> right? They just have that wide-eyed look of horror. They just yeah. they look away. They just sit there and rock back and forth. <laughs> Every time they go to the vet, they fucking beg for fucking their 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 sense of smell to be fucking removed from them. <laughs> could, could you just imagine like what cats and dogs experience sound wise? 
like because their ears their hearing is way more amped up and they're like leg they're like leg in the bed like all like down in their little bed on the floor so they're not seeing anything and then like you start start having sex with your husband or your wife or whatever and all they hear is slap 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 (laughs) and they just like wake up and go (laughs) oh so her stepchildren Uh. aged 9 10 and 13 walked in and uh, because they had, they were installing drywall in the garage and had taken off their shirts when they were itchy from the fibers. And they, the kids walked in, explained she considered herself a feminist and wanted to make a point that everybody should be fine with walking around their house or elsewhere with skin showing. Her lawyers wrote in court documents that the charge was unconstitutional, but it's a class A misdemeanor. Mm. So though her husband was similarly clad, he was not charged because guys being with their shirts off is fine. Yeah, because they don't have juicy titties. <laughs> not, not weird. Do you do you think the girls like? Do you think the stepkids like walked in and there was stepmom with her fucking tits out, and they you know and the dad was there with his shirt off too, and the kids looked at the dad, looked at the mom, looked at the dad, and then went, Dad, where are her organs? <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a bastard. Um, you the, are just the biggest bastard in the world. The state's lewdness statute criminalizes exposure of the female breast below the top of the areola in the presence of a child in a private place under circumstances the person should know will likely cause an affront or alarm. Here's the thing, though. Had she just like reacted, been like, "Oh my god!" and then the dad been like, "Oh, kids, get out of here! We're we're changing. We got stuff all over yeah. us." The kids probably would have been like, "Oops," and not said a fucking thing. Nobody would have known right. about it. But yep. she had to be all like, "Now, kids, listen. This is perfectly natural." <laughs> the normal reaction that a normal person would take would be, "Oh, hey, kids, get the fuck out of here!" Yeah. Right. And the kids would have went, oops, sorry. And, oop, I didn't see nothing. Yeah, I get as your stepmom, you'd be really weirded out. Like, if you were there trying to justify it, that would be really uncomfortable as a freaking nine-year-old kid. You're right. Fuck yeah. You know, but at the same time, even with her being, like, a feminist and explaining to her kids, listen, this is very natural. Like, it's, it's just boobs. Which is, you know, like, you can disagree or agree with that. But if convicted, she faces imprisonment, fines, and requirement to register as a sex offender for 10 years. That's a bit steep. That's a little. That's a little. For this situation. I can understand if a mom was like, suck on my titties to her own kids. (laughs) Like, being like an actual sex offender, right? But this this woman was just trying, like, this is, this doesn't seem to be something that's worthy of sex offender list for 10 years. Yeah. I know. No, no, that's scary. Yeah, uh-huh. that's. A, I mean, I mean it, these it, things should be judged on case by case basis, right? I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, was she facing that charge when she, uh, when 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 she uh, decided to say not guilty? Um, yeah, that's what they told her the charge. That was they were facing with when she said not. Uh, she she just thought the court would i guess she thought the court would side with her because it was like a reasonable mistake even the dad went to court and was like it, we were changing because of the fiber class all over us and we didn't know our kids would come in like it was a complete mistake it's not like she was perving out on our kids but they still they followed the letter of the law and this has happened before i i remember one episode of the grind we read a story of a man who had to be put on a sex offender list for exposing himself at a playground. But the but when you look at the situation, it was the middle of the night. There were no kids or nobody at the playground. Cop was driving by and saw it. He was walking home drunk and decided to take a piss in the bush. Ugh. And because he was pissing in the bush next to a playground with no kids in two oh. in the morning, he got put on a sex offender list because yeah. that's the letter of the law. And it's kind of like... Oh, come on. Really? He wasn't exposing himself to children. He was taking a piss in the bush at two in the morning. 
Yeah, now people are going to see the same stigma with him as they do for, like, scumbag creeps, you know? Like pedophiles yeah. and shit. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. like, these things need to be, like, a little bit more common sense. Tempered. Yeah, I yeah, mean, they need to be it's case by case basis. We can all agree you're stumbling home from the pub. At least you're not driving, right? And you're stumbling yeah. home from the pub, and you've got to piss. And you're like, oh, fuck it, there's a bush. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Edos. Whoop, 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 <laughs> and then, whoop, whoop, whoop. And you don't even, what if that guy didn't even know he was at a playground? Like, it's so dark. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're dark. yeah. You know, and it's like, that's different than a guy pulling up to a playground with a bunch of kids playing. And it's all like, get in my van. You know? I'm going to pee, pee right here in front of you. Yeah, you know, like, come on, you know, people. Yeah, come on, man. That, that's just a, I mean, the Earth realm is totally fucking nuts. It's going to be so easy to take these fuckers over. Yeah. Um, it I, is. Yeah, apparently all you really need is socialism. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Venezuela. Just show up and be like, hey, everybody, I uh, I can be your future dark overlord and you'll get free shit. Um, I also have this thing called the new Green Deal. Um, exactly. <laughs> They're going to kill all your cows because... Lyra's got enough methane for us all. <laughs> 48-year-old uh, Sh uh, Sh Shanda Johnson Williams was arrested on Tuesday, November 18th, after her husband, Jamie Williams, aged 48 as well, was found stabbed to death inside their home in Fort Towns uh, Towson two days earlier. According to a statement released by the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, a 911 call was made Sunday to say that Williams had been found unresponsive at his home. By the time paramedics arrived at the premises, Williams was dead, with a medical examiner subsequently ruling that he, the cause of death was a single stab wound. In her mugshot, which is why this is in the news, uh, was published online by authorities, Johnson Williams, the wife who stabbed him, uh, was pictured grinning like a psychopath. Just. Oh, uh, yeah. The smiling photo won't help her when showed at uh, at jury time, says J Sheriff Terry Park. No shit. It didn't even look like she was guilt, like, at least, like, regretted it. She was straight up just like. You know, you, you, that that's a big thing. Mugshots, you, you, you always want to look remorseful. Or you really want to look like you don't belong there. Like, hey, yeah. like what, I, what are you doing to me? I, I, I don't got nothing to do with this. Right, exactly. Come on, stop doing this bullshit. Fucking. Ugh. All right. Here we go. Another story coming. Uh, this one's a bit more fun now that we've talked about like the law breaking and the weird fucking laws and people murdering each other. Uh, two British police officers broke a toilet cubicle having sex on hurricane rescue mission to the British Virgin Islands. Those two dudes must have had a great time. <laughs> All right. Two British police officers are alleged to have broken a toilet cubicle while having sex on hurricane rescue mission. Uh, a, a tribunal into gross misconduct heard that the two officers who have not been identified, were said to have damaged the door during a vigorous sexual encounter. The claims were made by Derbyshire Chief's, uh, Chief Superintendent Graham McLaughlin, the gold commander of the con contingent of UK police officers. Fancy. Okay. The 53-year-old appeared at Derbyshire Police Headquarters in Ripley yesterday for the tribunal, where it was alleged that he sent menacing text messages to a female officer threatening to release graphic details of her sex life. McLaughlin revealed the claims about the two officers as he said worse things had been done by other members of the force, citing the toilet incident as an example. He said their uh, amorous behavior was an example of more serious misdemeanors committed by other officers who, unlike him, had been investigated and escaped censor. Um, so he was pissed off he didn't get laid. Pretty much. So basically, what I'm getting out of that is two people were having sex and broke a door of a bathroom, and now they're being... These are the people, by the way, in, in the kingdom of Uck, that are arresting people for being mean online. 
Wait, 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 boss, 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 rewind. They arrest people for bad digital words? Yes. That's actually a thing. That's actually a thing. Wow, whoa. <laughs> no. Yay. I just lyred. Um... <laughs> I, 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 I'm at a loss there. They, well, they seriously arrest people for, for bad words. Well, this is not new news. You've been on SideQuest long enough to hear these stories. Uh, how, I forget. how deep is your dementia? Pretty fucking deep, dude. Seriously. But, Wow. I'm sorry, but wow. For for making fun of people online, they're arresting people. What kind of drugs are they smoking over there, man? Watch train spotting. <laughs> Deal. Um I get it now. Okay. Here's some entertainment news coming out. Um <clears throat> Are we having a problem with the stream? I'm getting red here. I'm I'm getting a red signal. Not good. Not good. Okay, it's green. I'm, I'm watching now. If everything is All right. sure. Okay. Here's some uh, news coming out of uh, entertainment, and uh, a lot of people probably already se uh, seen this on um, on Twitter's. Um, it was a popular story tweeted the other day, but I thought I'd cover it. Julie Ro Julia Roberts, actress Julia Roberts, was suggested to play Harriet Tubman by studio execs, says Harriet Screenwriter. That hole is still alive. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay. Some exec suggested casting Julia Roberts, which is a bit ridiculous for the role of Harriet Tubman. She'd have to literally be in blackface. But, unless it was like an animated movie. But anyway, um, how is this news? It's not like they actually cast her. It's not like Julia Roberts said yes to the role. This was literally just somebody wanting to, you know, cause a stir in social media by oust ousting this weird executive who thought Julia Roberts would be perfect for the role. Yeah, it's not like their whole freaking civilization is falling apart over there. This is definitely the most pressing matter they could have commented on. It's not like trying to get get uh, a further wedge into their, their uh, racial problems, is there? Yeah, I mean, everything is like... It's not like that. No. And then there's, like, guilt by association, and you're made to feel guilty for having thoughts. Like, was yeah. this guy... We don't know the whole story. Was this guy suggesting Julia Roberts because he thought it was an animated feature and that perhaps she could just do the voice of Harriet Tubman? Is that racist? Do you have to have a black person voice a black character? Or what? I mean... You know, you had Val Kilmer voicing Moses in the fucking Prince of Egypt movie, and he was he's not Egyptian, you know? Um, he's, he's, what is he? He's fat. He's a white guy, whatever. Who cares? You know? He's fat guy. <laughs> I mean, he might, they might have got, Jew, he might be Jewish, and that's why they got him, because, you know, they were all Oi. Hebrews. They were all Hebrews. But, <laughs> but anyway... Uh, when someone pointed out that Roberts couldn't be Harriet, the executive responded, it was so long ago, no one is going to know the difference. What? Okay, what? Now, now we're getting a clearer now picture just, here. Just stupid. Now, was this guy high on cocaine? <laughs> was this guy on cocaine? <laughs> wow. If you were to think of the most out-of-left-field actress to play Harriet Tubman in a movie... You still wouldn't stumble upon the person one executive allegedly suggested. Harriet, the historical drama based on Tubman's life, released earlier this month, stars Cynthia Ervo, uh, but the film's screenwriter and producer, um, Gregory Allen Howard, says when he first started working on the movie in 1994, one studio exec executive suggested Julia Roberts to portray the legendary slave turned abolitionist. Yes, Julia Roberts. Okay, now we're getting some hearsay here. Because 1994, long time ago, right? Julia Roberts was the hot 
this. Yeah, and Julia Roberts was very popular at the time, but at the same time, he's quoting directly that this Hollywood exec who goes unnamed was all like, who's going to know the difference? Harriet Tubman was like forever ago. Like, Dude, he was high as a motherfucker. Maybe that, or he didn't he say it at all. High. This he sounds... High. I'm sorry, no, no. This sounds made up to try to promote yeah. the movie and get more asses in seats by causing a controversy. Mm, mm -hmm. That's oh. what this feels like to me. I'm sorry. This feels like some bullshit. Like, oh, oh, you guys don't even know. 1994, some white dude walked up to me and was like, Julia Roberts should play Harriet Tubman. Nobody will know. It was so long ago. whoop de doo You know? And it's like, this sounds like something no one would say. Ever. You know? Yeah. I, I don't know if you people watching agree or not. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't I don't think so. My, yeah, my it vote seems... is a yeah. two. Very implausible. My vote is a two. Yeah. yeah. In a, in a Q&A with Alan published earlier this month by Harriet Studio Focus Features and reiterated in the LA Times essay published Tuesday... Alan recalled how the climate in Hollywood was very different some 25 years ago. I was told how one studio head said in a meeting, this script is fantastic, let's get Julia Roberts to play Harriet Tubman. Alan explained. Okay, so now he's saying he was told by somebody else who heard the executive say this. So now we're even oh. getting like a game of telephone mm. from 1994. Yeah. Yeah, how, ma how many degrees of separation? Right. Yeah. When someone pointed out that Roberts couldn't be Harriet, the executive responded, it was so long ago, no one is going to know the difference. This doesn't feel real to me. I'm sorry. I, I have my doubts here. He heard from somebody else who heard this happened, and this was in 1994, it, 25 years ago. It sounds like this dude is trying to get his name in the press to drum up some sort of controversy or business. Yeah. For himself. Mm-hmm. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, and then it goes on to talk about representation in Hollywood and how 12 Years a Slave became a hit and then Black Panther became a hit. So now it's finally time to do the Harriet Tubman movie uh, that he's been working on since 1994. Oh. And, and it's been in production hell. Yeah. Now, I didn't even know this movie existed, so there's not a lot of marketing out there. Um, maybe he's trying to get a little boost to the marketing because it's not doing so well. Yeah, he's looking. He's looking to get backers. Right. That's what he's looking for right now. Mm -hmm. What a load of horseshit! Right. Your movie's got no legs, and it, it won't see the light of day. You crumb. You're lying, and everybody knows you're lying. And and not even Saul Shitberg will fucking back your movie. <laughs> you're terrible. Wait. Yep. You're worse than fucking Lyra shit mound. That Indeed. she laid in the class round, class day. That's right. All right, okay. some uh, some historical stuff here. I found an interesting article. Uh, something coming from history, ancient cultures of the Earth realm, that has that is baffling, baffling scientists and uh, what are the people that dig shit up? Archaeologists. What? Archaeologists. Why the fuck are they digging shit up, man? Yeah. Shit should be buried. All right. So apparently a tomb was unearthed uh, from 2,100 years ago, and the tomb had babies. The babies. Magical babies? The babies, little baby tombs? The little baby tombs. Oh. But this is what's so weird about it. Infant skeletons date back 2,100 years and were wearing the skulls of other children in their burial tombs. Oh. They were little tiny necromancers. Midget necromancers. Burn them. And they had, they still had flesh on them at the time of burial. I told you, the necromancers. Shut that up. Is... This has nothing to do with necromancy. Necromancy is about bringing things back from the dead, not burying things with body parts. Stupid. Archaeologists are mean? perplexed by the discovery of two ancient human infants who were buried while wearing the skulls of other children on their heads. Wow. Wow. These, That's freaky. These morbid baby helmets, which were found in Ecuador, <laughs> represent the only examples of this funeral rite. baby helmets. 
is the only examples of this funeral rite in the entire world, according to a new paper about the odd find in the Journal of Latin American Antiquity. The babies were interred in a burial mound at Salongo, an archaeological site on the central Ecuadorian coast, sometime around the year 100 BCE. Their remains were uncovered during excavations and resulted in the discovery of 11 human burials. So he quickly recognized that there was two layers of skull and removed the burials with uh, the surrounding soil matrix intact to help preservation. When I analyzed the remains in 2017, we actually finished excavating the remains in the lab, which led to more detailed discoveries about the age of the primary individuals and the extra cranial parts. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Sweden, morbid baby helmet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, that's a great band name. That oh. is, that is. Oh my God! Morbid baby That's helmet. Poor man. <laughs> we get lost in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Our next story comes from a place that apparently is some sort of location in the Earth realm that I never want to go to. Now, I I, I will admit our world has a lot of horrible things in it. We have creatures and monsters and magic and dragons and eldritch horrors of the abyssal realms but this shit scares the fuck out of me all right british man nearly dies after a parasite crawls into his penis and lays its eggs ah. mm -mm. no 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 oh. no the dreaded Kendiru. The parasite crawled inside his body when the man went to swim in Lake Malawi in Southeast Africa. The man Don't says you. he was on holiday of a lifetime with friends when he nearly died. James Michael from London contracted schistosomiasis, also known as bilharzia, following that swim. When I look back at the photos from my time in Africa, it's weird to think that's where the parasite crawled up my penis. Yeah, usually you'd want more oh. detailed photos for a, a fun night like that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, no. it wasn't exactly how I imagined the trip of a lifetime going. The whole experience was surreal and strange. The 32-year-old contracted the disease while on holiday. On his East African holiday, the man swam and canoed on Lake Malawi almost every day. It was then he returned to London that symptoms began. Ugh. Is this the part where he's like eating breakfast and everybody thinks he's fine, but then all of a sudden it's like... Ugh, uh, uh. You know? No, it's where his dick comes up, grabs a dinner roll, and fucking goes right, like, <laughs> right back between his fucking legs. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> Can you imagine? That? <laughs> hey guys, that African trip was really awesome. You know, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, that that African <laughs> trip was really awesome. I don't. Oh, thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple of months after the holiday, he began losing feeling in both legs. A keen oh. cyclist, he blamed it on his body, uh, on his hobby at first. He thought he was cycling too much. However, as symptoms worsened and he found himself struggling to even walk up a flight of stairs, he went to hospital. He was sent home with antibiotics, but continued getting worse, so a week later he returned to hospital. Yeah, that's the NHS for you. Uh, <laughs> I explained to them that something was seriously going on. I went to neurology department and they did blood tests to see what was up. They determined quite quickly that my immune system was was under attack and well my immune system my own immune system was attacking my spine wow leading That's so scary leading to the loss of control of my legs i was put on six month course of steroids to counter this but they didn't exactly actually actually know what caused it doctors from the hospital for tropical diseases found that a parasitic worm had crawled up his penis and laid eggs inside of his body 
Now, this is different from the little fish that goes up the penis and then splits its spines out. Yeah. You know, that's why you shouldn't pee. Yeah. yeah, that's why you shouldn't pee in the water because it'll follow your urine follow stream. Up stream up. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's it. This is different. This is a worm that wiggled its way into while his While he was pee-hole. sleeping. While he was sleeping, he, he got a little no. something in his doodle. It was while he was swimming. Oh! Doctors, oh. <laughs> the parasitic worms move through the blood to areas of the body such as the liver and the bowels. A few weeks later, after they began laying eggs, the man was prescribed medication to try to kill the eggs. That killed the infection, but I was left basically debilitated. They told me there was a 30% chance I'd make a full recovery 10 years from now. Wow, that's horrible. He spent three months in a wheelchair in a hospital and then four months on crutches. Ugh. Nature Stay don't fuck water. around. Nature wow. don't fuck around. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> he couldn't use the toilet normally, so he had to use a catheter. That was oh. quite embarrassing as well. He was so oh, weak. that sucks. Yeah, he was so weak. His girlfriend couldn't even hug him as it was too painful because the, his immune system was attacking his bone marrow. Wow! Uh, don't hug me. Uh. Don't look at me. I'm the elephant man. I got to piss in a bag. Because I had to go to Africa. Adventure of a lifetime. All right. And finally, we have a really disturbing story out of, uh, I, I'm guessing this is India. Yeah, it looks like India. A woman buried alive in cow manure to treat a snake bite dies of suffocation. How did I know it was going to be about shit when you said India? I have to end, end, I have to end the show on this. I'm sorry. <laughs> did we get any super chats? Nope. Okay. I just wanted to check before we end the show. All well, right. We're good on Streamlabs too, boss. All right. Thank you. A woman in rural India has suffocated to death after she was buried alive in cow manure as part of a healing ritual to treat her snake bite. Victim, uh who's been identified as Devon Devendry had her hand bitten by a snake when she was out collecting firewood at the suggestion of her husband Mukesh. She sought treatment from the local snake charmer. And of course, cows are sacred in India. So being buried in their poo poo was like a sacred thing. Desperate to have the snake bite treated immediately. The couple agreed to the snake charmer, weird healing practice according to the healer being buried under a pile of cow dung will help suck out the venom wrong well being buried under cow dung only fucking makes you stinky (laughs) the husband said that he and his late wife tried other ways to help treat the snake bite except for apparently go to a hospital (laughs) um they had used medicines and even tied a rope around her arm to cut off the poison spreading However, the couple was advised by the snake charmer to go with the cow dung method. Murray also believed that this ritual can treat the bite so that the couple agreed to his suggestion. After all that, Mukash was still baffled as to why the method didn't work. He didn't expect for her to die. In fact, he believed she'd pull through. The snake charmer, on the other hand, also expressed his confidence in the treatment, which obviously failed. So this guy's like, it didn't work for her because she suffocated, but it would have totally worked if she had lived. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She, if, if 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 we didn't put cow shit up her nose and in her mouth, she would have been right as rain, pal. Mm-hmm. Yep. My, what the fuck is with the Indians and the shit? Yep. Every, Every time I, why? And I just want to was... I just want to let anybody know if any of you are freaked out about any of the stories we covered in the bride. The best way to get rid of them out of your head is to go. <laughs> or have Lyra come and do her fart dance on you. I really loved Lyra in that movie, Dances with Farts. It was a, it was a little, <laughs> it was a little too long, in my opinion. Yeah. It was a bit drawn out. But the soundtrack was nice. Yeah, it was a bit dry for me. The, uh, there was a lot of bass in the soundtrack. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Vibrated. The, the the sequel, One Fart for the Road, was um, 
was was a tour de force. Yeah, I believe. Mm -hmm. But yep. I I did I didn't care for her in broke back farts. Um, <laughs> no, no, I didn't much care. For I, her. I can you imagine? She was on stage. The most the most fa famous scene in that in that film was her going, "I can't quit you," and then the other elf going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a moist it was a moist performance when they should have went dry on that. Um, me personally, personally, I liked her in Fart House where she played a uh, roughneck um, bouncer, and she would she would kick people out with her ass. Yeah, that was a pretty good one. Fart House. Was, I did enjoy that. Was pretty one. good. What a uh... go away, everyone. and kill you makes you stronger except for dragons dragons will kill you